Hello, everybody. Thank you for taking a few minutes tonight to uh, join us for uh, our Wednesday night uh, lesson. This is November 11th, and I want to wish all of our veterans a very special, happy Veterans Day. Uh, you are deserving of anything anyone gives you because of your sacrifice for our country, and we want to thank you for that. I also want to pray for those that are currently active serving, like uh, Brandon Mann and um, Paige Poland, who uh, serves in the reserve, and uh, those of you that continue to serve our country in any capacity, we're grateful for everything that you've done for us. As you can tell, uh, I'm sitting in my study at the house, and um, we uh, were tested yesterday. So I'm waiting the results uh, for myself to see uh, if I'm okay. I uh, don't, don't want to be walking around with this thing and not know it with, with as many people that are down in the church. So uh, we'll give you an update once that takes place. Uh, also, I want you to uh, continue to pray for our leadership, continue to pray for Marcia and Dave as they come through this, and those that continue to try to battle through the COVID uh, I hope you'll join me in watching the governor tonight at 5.30. Uh, most of you should have received the announcement that we are going online only for the next two weeks. Do I want to do that? No. Do we need to? Yes. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll be going online only for at least the next two weeks. So look for that 10.30 a.m. Uh, message uh, online, okay? So we'll... Uh, We'll, we'll try to minister that way. Uh, we're going to be making a decision in regards to the Thanksgiving Day meal. There's some concern there. So uh, just keep posted and keep praying for us. But we'll try to get that message out uh, clear once we decide uh, what we're going to do one way or the other. All right? Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for this day. And I do thank you for the men and women who have served our country and many that gave their life, Lord, to protect our freedom. We thank you for that. Help us now as we open your word. Uh, give us uh, spiritual ears to hear. Lord, give us a soft heart so that we can understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you have your uh, Bible, I want you to open it with me to Psalm chapter 71. The 71st chapter of Psalm. And as we open the Word of God, I, I want to remind you that uh, the Psalms uh, give us uh, not, not uh, so much as a, um, a song like uh, song, uh, Proverbs that Solomon wrote, but Psalms would give us uh, life lessons. It's almost as if, if the psalmist had walked the same road that we're traveling. And... I want to draw your attention to Psalm 71 when the Bible says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Let me never be put to shame. You know, when my eyes are on the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm going to make good decisions. My problem, maybe yours at times, is that we take our eyes off Christ and we still try to make the same spiritual decisions. Now, when you think about the life of the church, um, we should be praying about things, right? We should be asking the Lord for guidance and asking the Lord to give us direction for uh, decisions that we're making. You just don't flip a coin and, or snap your fingers or, or uh, uh, just roll dice and then say, we're going to do that. Uh, that. That's not the way it works in, in a church and church leadership and sensing God. We've got to be praying. We've got to be people of prayer. And when we put our trust in Christ, when we're walking in obedience to Christ, uh, we're not going to put his testimony to shame, nor will our life fall apart. Uh, have, you ever, um, have you ever pulled a thread in a pair of clothes? Uh, I'm grateful for Myrna Super, who is really for the most of the time I've been your pastor, She's been pretty much my personal seamstress. Does that make sense? 
for instance, if I buy a new suit, first first person I do, first thing I do is I call Myrna if, if there's a, something, an alteration that needs made, and, and I ask her to do it. She does it. Uh, because number one, she knows kind of how I'm built now, and she also recognizes my sizes, but she knows what to do. Life sometimes can be like the thread that you pull, just thinking you're helping things, and before long, you've got bigger problems than when you started. Um, my mom taught me a long time ago, uh, cut a loose thread, don't pull it, because a lot of things can unravel. And the truth is, when we think about our Christian life, life unravels because oftentimes we're not putting our trust in Christ. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, they call it the hall of faith, and many listed uh, in chapter 11 of Hebrews are those who came through great uh, struggles or great valleys or great victories uh, th through faith in Christ, uh, through faith in God. And, and you know, he, he, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. That's you and me. It's Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we've got to be willing to put our trust in Him. And the Bible says when we do that, we will not put him to shame, nor we will be put to shame. I believe the psalmist is reminding us that when you trust God and when you're obedient to God, um, he'll take care of you. He'll take care of li your life. Doesn't mean it'll be easy. Doesn't mean it will always go the way we want it, but it means that he'll walk with us. So I ask you uh, on this uh, Veterans Day, not just have you placed your faith in Christ, but are you placing your faith in Christ daily? Are you trusting Him? Uh, you know, I, I'm grateful that uh, I really appreciate all of the birthday wishes that you have sent me. I, it, it's been a little overwhelming. Thank you for that. Uh, the cards and the notes and uh, Stacy showed me the Facebook notes. So thank you for all of that. But boy, it's a little... Uh, humbling because now I'm 59 and I told Renee if I can just hang on six more months we'll be at that magic 59 and a half that point where you can pull out your retirement without a penalty <laughs> that seemed to be like light years away and and now here it is and as we think about serving the Lord uh, I'm grateful that the trust that we've put in him in the past is the same faith that we need to walk with today and in the days ahead. Um, the Bible says, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Listen at this. And cause me to escape. So what does the psalmist tell us? That God gives us an escape hatch when uh, when we're tempted. God gives us an escape hatch when, uh, when we feel prone to throw in the towel or, or just cave in to Satan. We don't have to do it. Listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Amen? God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you might be able to bear it. I love that. I love that God doesn't leave us hanging. I love that God doesn't play games with His creation, that He literally gives us an off-ramp when it comes to making bad decisions. Back in Psalm 71, the Bible says, Be my strong refuge, to which I may resort continually. You see, the Christian life, folks, isn't about being hot and cold for Jesus. It's about trusting Him and walking with Him daily. And that's what we have to do right now. I know there's so much disappointment from the kids about being pulled out of school now for remote only. Um, our, our boys... Uh, uh, Kobe's in kindergarten, and he cried when his mom told him that uh, they weren't going to be going to class. He, he wanted to be with his teacher. And uh, boy, I pray we would have the same kind of passion when it comes to worshiping together. 
uh, I don't want you to get discouraged. Um, I'll try not to be, and, and I pray that you won't be. Uh, let, let's don't get discouraged. This, this has got to be uh, a temporary thing, and, and I know we're getting into the holidays now, and it's going to affect uh, our schedule, and uh, just get ready for that. Uh, I doubt if we'll be doing a Christmas Eve service this year, and man, that kills me to even think of that, but uh, what, what else are we supposed to do right now? We've got to, we've got to make sure that we put people in a position uh, to be healthy and safe and uh, not not be reckless. And I know other churches aren't trying to be reckless. We're just we're just trying to be first Camden, okay? So thank you for your input about what other churches are doing, and and I respect that. But we've just got to be first Camden. So thank you for your prayers. Um, God will be our refuge. The Bible says, "Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge." Psalm seventy one three, to which I may resort continually to which I may resort continually. What is a resort? It's a place where you go to get away. It's a place where you go to rest. It's a, go, it's a place where you can uh, recline and just not do anything. Get your strength back. You know, when we go to the Lord, we recognize that He is our resort. That rest is found in Him. And my prayer is that the days, uh, the steps you're walking that you would trust God as your source of resort. You have given the commandment to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. My fortress, my protection, my defense. Amen? Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the righteous and cruel man, for you are my hope. You are my trust. And then the psalmist says, you are my trust from my youth. You've, you were there for me then, Lord, and you're here for us now. And my prayer is that you would trust Him and walk with Him and recognize that when we put our trust in Him and Him alone, um, He'll take care of this thing called life. Okay, God's in charge. And I want to tell you I love you. Uh, God loves you. And uh, I'll be reaching out church-wide here with some announcements, but just be reminded, pass the word, that we will be online only for the next two weeks. Um, I'll let you know uh, what my uh, test is and also uh, continue to pray for Marsha and Dave and uh, Pat and Dave Fife uh, and pray for Sandy George, uh, who is now at Bethesda North. And Sandy's been diagnosed with COVID and pneumonia. And many of you know that she battles the sugar issue and, and she's really sick. So uh, I want you to pray for her, if you will, okay? If you have any spiritual questions that maybe I can help you with or encourage you through, uh, go to our website at www.camdencornerofhope.com. You can click the info button. It'll give you an opportunity to ask a question or, or give me a comment. That'll go directly to me. It'll come directly to my email, and I'll try to respond to you uh, as quickly as possible. So God bless you. Uh, I want to encourage you to bow your heads and close with me in prayer. Father, we recognize that you're the giver of every good thing. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just help our nation, help our state. God, help our county uh, and the people in our county uh, get through this COVID and over it so that we can get out and folks can get back to worship without fear. And uh, I pray for our church family that is hurting. And uh, we do lift up these that we've mentioned. I pray for Beulah that she continues to heal. And the many in our church, God, we ask that you would surround with your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Um, we love you. And we look forward to worshiping online this Sunday. We'll see you later.